What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Now a common question I get is, Vanessa, how are you able to consistently post content on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and maintain a weekly newsletter series? Well, you're in luck because in today's video, I'm gonna break down my exact tips and tricks on how I'm able to post over 100 content pieces every single month on multiple platforms. Specifically, I'm gonna share my workflows when it comes to finding content, planning content, creating content, distributing content, and evaluating whether or not your content is even moving the needle. So regardless if you are a solopreneur or you're someone with a team, you definitely want to watch until the very end because I have a feeling my tips and tricks are going to save you a ton of time and also maximize the amount of reach that you want to get with your content. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. All right, so when it comes to finding content, my biggest advice to speed up your workflow is actually create as many templates and frameworks as you can. And throughout the video, I'm gonna share the exact frameworks and templates that I use, and you'll also get a chance to snag them for yourself as well. But basically, one thing that we teach inside our paid program, the Boss Graham Academy, to our clients is we teach our clients about content pillars and revolving their content strategy around these content pillars. Now, there are three categories when it comes to content. You wanna create education-based content that really drives up your authority you also want to create inspiration based content that really makes your audience feel inspired and feel closer to you as a personal brand. And then the third category is anything that's related to sales, anything that's actually going to promote the products that you actually sell. So let's say we look at the category of building your authority through educational content. Well, the three top content pillars that you'd want to revolve your content around is any content that's about calling out mistakes that you see your audience making. The second one is talking about myths and misconceptions that exist within your industry. And then the third one is giving tips. So for example, this video right here is really tip based. Whereas I have other content pieces that call out mistakes or I also call out myths. And so all of these content pieces are really meant to drive your authority and also be educational for your audience. Now, the second category of content is really inspirational and it's really meant to build up your personal brand and have your audience feel more connected to you. So the three content pillars that are under this category is creating content around things that will inspire your audience. It's also about creating content that will give fun facts or stories about you as a personal brand. And then the third content pillar is really about shifting people's beliefs, really making them feel more confident or changing their opinion on something so that you can get them on your side. These are the different types of content pieces that can bring your audience closer to you. And then the third category that we have is anything that's more sales related, more promotional focused, content pieces that will actually drive customers to your door. So for example, some content pillars that exist under this category is any type of content piece that's really going to address possible objections that your audience may have. So for instance, if one big objection that my audience has towards my service is that it's too expensive, then maybe I'll create content pieces that directly addresses that objection that talks about the power investing in yourself or how to make a return on investment or anything that's related to that objection. Then the second type of content pillar is sharing social proof and testimonials. If you already have clients within your services, then really highlighting those client wins, that's also a form of content. And then finally, the third content pillar is anything that directly promotes your product. So for instance, a content piece like this, where I straight up talk about the Boss Graham Academy, all of its benefits and all of its features. These are also content pieces that will really fit well within your content ecosystem. So as you can see in total, there are nine content pillars that I teach my clients and that I use myself. The next step is really to put all nine of these content pillars into a matrix just like this one. Now, once you've put the nine content pillars on one side of the matrix, on the top row, you're now gonna fill it with the typical subjects that you talk about, whether that's in your paid programs or whether it's just in general as a content creator. So for instance, in general, I typically talk about entrepreneurship, social media, specifically Instagram, YouTube, and sometimes TikTok, and I'll also talk about personal branding. So I would put that in the top row. Now you have this really nice matrix. Or if you are someone who sells a program, a course, a consulting service, this is also a really great place to put the things that you typically cover in your programs or in your products. So for example, inside the Boss Graham Academy, I talk about how to find a niche, how to create content. I talk about Instagram. I talk about launching a business. I talk about signing clients, doing sales calls, doing webinars, all these different things in my program. And so I would put those in the top row. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna have this beautiful matrix that's gonna help you with coming up with content ideas on the fly. 
So for example, on any given day, I would take out this matrix and I would say, okay, I'm gonna talk about Instagram one day. That's a subject that I typically cover in my paid program. And then I would look on the column side of the matrix and I would say, okay, today I'm gonna talk about Instagram mistakes or I'm gonna talk about Instagram myths or I'm gonna share Instagram tips or even maybe I will share a personal story about myself and my journey with Instagram. Or if I wanna promote my program, specifically the Instagram component, component of it, I might say, okay, today's content piece is going to be some social proof of testimonials from clients who have gotten Instagram results inside my program. So as you can see, this matrix is really handy because you can just basically go down each subject and create nine different content pieces for each of those subjects at any given time. So as you can see, when you create templates, frameworks, and matrices for yourself, it allows you to streamline your workflow over time. And to take things a step further, we even created this 100 Content Ideas Vault on Notion that covers the nine content pillars that we teach our clients. And we have over 100 content ideas that are applicable to any niche or industry. Anytime that you click on a card, it's gonna give you a prompt and it'll give you an example of how to create content with that prompt. As a bonus, we've also added 10 engagement hooks that you could use in the beginning of your captions to really entice someone to take action on your content. As you can see, this is a super, super handy tool. And if you want this 100 Content Ideas Vault, you can snag it in my description box below. I use this content vault myself and it's really helped me come up with so many content ideas. And the best part is, is that it is applicable to any niche or industry that you are in. Not to mention on the side, we also give really clear instructions on how to use this content vault. And we also explain each of the nine content pillars so you know how to apply it for your niche and for your industry. So remember, click the link in my description box to snag this 100 content ideas vault for yourself. I really hope that it helps you as much as it has helped my own clients. Now, so far in this video, I've really covered how to create templates or examples of templates that I use in my own business, whether it's the matrix or the 100 content ideas vault that has totally changed the game for myself. But one thing that I also do is I'm very, very smart with where I get my content ideas from and also repurposing my content. So I'm going to share with you my exact workflow of how I'm able to turn one content piece into hundreds. So here's how it works for me. Every single week, I will do one YouTube video and one weekly newsletter. These are considerably really rich content pieces. Then from there on my team, I have a content writer that actually watches and reads all of my content. She's going to then write as many Twitter threads as she can, micro content pieces from the larger content pieces that I created, whether that's YouTube or newsletter. What ends up happening is these Twitter threads then get turned into Instagram carousel posts just like this one. And then what I will also do is I will use these Twitter threads or Instagram carousel posts as my script for short form videos. Afterwards, what happens is I would have created so many short form videos based off of my carousels that my social media manager will now distribute these videos on Instagram Reels, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. This is exactly how I'm able to maximize my content, post over 100 pieces a month without necessarily coming up with new content ideas all the time. And one of the best parts is, is that most times your audience doesn't even recognize that your carousel post is the same as your short form video and is the same as your newsletter and is the same as your YouTube videos. You have to remember that people like to digest content in different ways. The person who's reading your long ass newsletter or watching your long ass YouTube video may not be the same person that's reading a carousel post and is also not the same person that's on Twitter and is also not the same person enjoying your short form videos. And so when you create content in this way, it really creates more accessibility and it creates more diversity with your content and the amount of people that you're able to reach. Now, of course, if you are someone who's a solopreneur and you don't have a team like a fancy content writer or a social media manager, you can still do the same workflow that I have at a smaller degree. So for example, if you are someone who has a podcast and you also do Instagram, then maybe considering repurposing some of the content that you did in your podcast onto your Instagram and vice versa. So remember, you don't necessarily have to come up with new content ideas for each platform. You just want to be strategic with your content repurposing. 
All right, so at this point in the video, I've really shared with you guys the different hacks and tips and workflows on how to multiply the amount of content ideas you come up with whenever you're doing your content planning. But you also need a place to organize that content and organize your thoughts. Now, in the past, I have used Airtable. I've also used Asana to map out a lot of my content when it came to YouTube, for example. But I noticed that as I grew on different platforms, now I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter, I I do a newsletter, I do YouTube, I do Instagram. I kind of outgrew some of that software. And so now what I do is I plan out a lot of my content using Notion. And the reason why I like using Notion is because you can really customize it to how you want. And especially if you're on multiple platforms, I find Notion to be one of the best ways to organize all that content and see it in one go. And so I'm gonna show you how I use Notion to plan out all of my content on my different platforms. All right, so this is our content planning dashboard that we customized and built on Notion for our business. So as you can see down here, this is the calendar view and it's got all of our platforms in one place, whether it's YouTube, newsletter, Instagram. And if you scroll down, we have our different platforms, newsletter, YouTube, Instagram, and even TikTok down here, which I'll explain in a bit. But let's look at this section by section. So when you look at newsletter, this is essentially where I write all of my emails for our Confessions of a Content Creator to CEO newsletter series. It is an email that I send out every single week sharing exclusive stories and lessons that I don't share anywhere else. You can click this link if you would like to subscribe to my newsletter. But anyways, this is where I open this card. And when you open the card, you are able to write your email. And so this is where I do everything. And then once I'm done, I typically set the status, whether it's writing, scheduling, published or whatever. And whenever I set the date of publishing, it'll automatically show up in this calendar. So these are all the published dates of all of our content platforms. Now scrolling down, the next section is YouTube. Some of you guys may be familiar with this workflow. We just migrated it over to Notion. And so I've got a column for my ideas, anything that I'm filming, anything that I'm scripting, editing, optimizing, and that's already scheduled out on the platform. And so if I were to click open this one, you can see that I've set the platform to YouTube. The status right now is in editing. And then this is the script that I have. And then I also have sections for where I'm putting my description, uh, my keywords, my cards and all that. So one thing that I really like is let's say I have a content idea and this is a new card that I'm doing. The beautiful thing about Notion is you can customize anything. And so I actually created an SEO template for myself. So if I click on SEO template, it's automatically gonna give out a template where I can put in my description, my keywords, my cards, and I just basically customize this to meet my own needs. And then I can also script the video and set everything over here. So this is my YouTube workflow. And again, when I set my publishing date, it'll automatically show up in this calendar right here. Now moving on to the next section and that is Instagram. And so Instagram follows a very similar workflow to YouTube. And so if I were to scroll down here, anything that's an idea will be in this column, anything that I'm writing or filming, cause you know, there's Instagram reels that we also do will be here. Anything that's editing or graphic design, depending on if it's a short form video or if it's a carousel post will be here, captions and scheduling. So I will basically move things to each level of the stage that we're in when it comes to producing the content piece. Let's say if I were to open this, we set the platform to Instagram. We also have set it so that we can tell you if it's a short form video, a carousel post or a single post. And then of course you could put the status and also whether or not we're repurposing that content piece to TikTok. And so let me show you a cool thing. But before I do that, this is basically what it looks like when I am writing my carousel post or my Twitter threads or whatever you wanna call it. And I also use the exact same script as my Instagram reels, my YouTube shorts, any short form video that I'm doing. So that's basically what my workflow looks like. But let's say I am creating a new post. The platform is Instagram. It's gonna be a short form video, but because it's a short form video, I also wanna repurpose it to TikTok. And so I will check this box that I created right here. And then I will say that uh, right now for TikTok, it is also an idea. And so the cool thing that's gonna happen is if you actually scroll down, it shows up here now the exact same thing is showing up here. And the reason why is because I checked it off as repurposed to TikTok. And so I've customized it where anytime I check off repurposed to TikTok, it'll automatically show up in this TikTok section. And basically it's got its own workflow that I can deal with when it comes to the TikTok platform. Example post right here is down here. Let's say if I uncheck this check mark, what happens? I uncheck the box and it disappears. Let's say I uncheck this box, boom, it disappeared again. Now I have nothing in this section because it's not repurposing it to TikTok versus if I check off this box, 
it'll show up. If I check off this box, both of them will show up. And so this is an amazing way that we have customized this for our own needs based on my workflow, because a lot of times my Instagram reels or my short form videos typically turn into TikToks anyways. And so it's an easy way to transfer information. Now, one thing that we did do is we actually created our own calendar view for TikTok specifically. So anything that has a published date will now be shown on this calendar. And so this is our TikTok calendar exclusively versus if you were to scroll up here, this is kind of like our other content platforms like newsletter, Instagram, and YouTube. And the reason why we did this is because we didn't want to totally confuse this calendar view. And we also just wanted to keep TikTok separate just because we kind of treat it as like a repurposing dump <laughs> of our main content pieces on Instagram, YouTube, and newsletter. But as you can see, this is our Notion dashboard that we have created for ourselves and it has been working incredibly well for us. We have even created quick links. So let's say if you want to only look at YouTube, you click at this and it'll only show YouTube, which is awesome. Another feature that we've added to is we've made it collapsible. So let's say if we find that it's getting really overwhelming, you can simply collapse this. And that way it's a lot cleaner of a dashboard and you don't have to go through endless scrolling and whatever you need, you can just uncollapse it and then you'll see your workflow that you need to focus on. This Notion dashboard is honestly amazing if you have multiple platforms that you're managing like me, and it has been working incredibly well for us. Now, if you are someone who wants a copy of this dashboard for yourself and you wanna learn how to customize it to your needs and the platforms that you're on, then you're in luck because I'm actually selling this template. So just click the link in my description box below to get this dashboard for yourself. I also include a video tutorial on how you can actually use Notion and customize it based on your needs. So for example, if you don't have a newsletter, you can easily remove that portion, or maybe you do a podcast, you can easily learn how to add that portion and so on and so forth. This Notion dashboard has absolutely changed the game for me. And one of my favorite things about it is just the fact that managing multiple platforms has never been easier. And the fact that I can customize it to whatever I want. So remember to click the link in my description box below, if you would like your own copy of this dashboard. All right, so at this point in the video, we've really covered how to find content ideas and how to organize them within the Notion dashboard. The next step is actually talking about how I create content and how I distribute content. So let's break down each type of content piece that I do. When it comes to my Instagram carousel post, it's as simple as putting the threads on Twitter and then screenshotting them and then putting them in Canva. And then the next step that we do because you're allowed to schedule carousels is we use Meta Business Suite and we'll literally schedule out all the carousel posts in one go. For short form videos, what I like to do is I will spend a day and I will sit down and I will literally hammer out as many one minute clips as I can. And I will typically have my laptop next to me where I will read out the threads or the carousel posts that I've done. And I basically use that as my script. And the best part is, is that usually one minute videos are pretty easy to do. And so I'm able to hammer out at least like 20 to 30 in each sitting. Now, when it comes to editing these short form videos, I do have the luxury of having a video editor who actually adds a lot of the captions within my videos. But if you are someone who doesn't have a video editor, what you can do is you can use an app called CapCut and you're able to add those captions on your own. Or alternatively, if you are someone who is interested in getting a video editor, I highly recommend using something like Upwork to find your video editor. My video editor is on Upwork and she is one of the best video editors that I've ever worked with. And so definitely check that resource out if you are in search of a video editor. Now, in addition to creating short form videos like this, we also create quote reels like this, which are way easier to create. All we do is we write a quote on Twitter, we then screenshot it, we'll put it on Canva, then we'll go on a website like Pixels and we'll get a stock video to add into Canva. We combine these two things together, we trim it so that it's a short seven minute clip, and then we will post it on Instagram Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, doesn't matter, and add trending music on top. And funny enough, we have found, at least on Instagram, that our quote reels actually outperform our talking head videos like this one. So if you are someone who doesn't necessarily want to show your face on social media, or you want to find an easy way to get your content out there while also getting the benefits of creating short form videos, this is definitely one of the best ways to go. Now, when it comes to scheduling on Instagram, you're not necessarily able to schedule an Instagram reel. So even for us in our company, we still post those manually. However, when it comes to YouTube shorts and TikTok, you're able to actually schedule those out in advance. So in Creator Studio, we will schedule out our YouTube shorts. And then on TikTok, we will use the desktop web browser to schedule those out too. And so definitely, if you are considering doing short form videos for Instagram reels, you might as well repurpose those to TikTok or YouTube and just schedule those out in advance to save you time. 
So at this point in the video, I've really shared a lot of advice and tips when it comes to finding content, planning content, creating content, and distributing content. Now let's talk about an area that a lot of people neglect, and that is evaluating your content. If you want to be an amazing content creator, but you also want to work towards being an awesome business owner, you definitely want to look at your past content pieces and see what worked and what didn't work and actually track those metrics. So for instance, every single week I have a scorecard for my business, which which also includes my social media efforts. And what I like to do is every single week, I like to see whether or not my follower growth is going down or up, what my reach is, what my views are. And I also like to track other metrics in my business as well. This allows me to see the relationship between my social media efforts and whether or not it's translating into business results. So for example, if I notice that I am getting a lot of reach one week because of my social media efforts, but I didn't necessarily get any sales, that tells me that even even though my content is really good at attracting an audience, it's not necessarily converting my followers into clients in which I might want to reevaluate my content and see why that's the case. Other ways that having the scorecard has been helpful is tracking my social media strategies. So for instance, if I have decided that I want to start posting every single day instead of three times a week, then because I'm tracking my metrics on a weekly basis, I can actually see if posting more is actually paying off or not. So for instance, in my scorecard, I once saw that, hey, if I actually post on a daily basis, I saw my reach significantly go up, my follower growth significantly go up. So that tells me that posting often is actually a better strategy than posting less. And so having a scorecard like this is extremely, extremely helpful. But not only am I tracking my social media efforts, as you can see, I also track other metrics in my business as well. Now, because every single time I share my templates and my workflows on YouTube, I always get bombarded with messages of people wanting a copy for themselves. I've actually included this KPI tracker inside my business forecasting mini course. So not only in this course, do I go over the KPI tracker and revolve a whole training around it. I also show you how to actually figure out how much money you need to make in your business, how to reverse engineer those goals, how to forecast for your business, whether it's expenses and revenue, and also how to manage your days and your money in order to achieve those goals that you have. And so if you are someone who is serious about hitting your goals this year or even next year, then you definitely wanna check out this mini course because I literally break down step by step by step how to achieve your goals financially and also on social media. So definitely check out the link if you would like to snag this mini course for yourself. Now, I am so confident that everything that you've learned so far in this video is absolutely going to supercharge your content and business efforts. So make sure you comment below. I can't wait to supercharge my content so I know you got to this point in the video. And if you want any of the templates that I've mentioned throughout the video, then check the description box below because all the links on how you can access them will be there. As always guys, I appreciate you. And if you want to learn my millionaire secrets on how I get more done and make more money as a creator and business owner, you definitely want to check out this video that I have right here, where it's really going to break down how to measure what matters in your business and how to make more money while being more productive. So you definitely want to check out this video. I have a feeling you're going to really, really like it. As always guys, it's been a pleasure teaching you how to maximize your content and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.